Next up, Jody Adams. <laughs> Got some fans of Jody Adams. Jody Adams is a skydiving ninja. I'm just a grant writer. Often wearing black while plummeting to the earth at 120 miles per hour. Her ninja training includes yoga. Armed solely with a camera, she takes, she takes pictures with cat-like reflexes. Currently, she is honing her skills by living in a secret lair in the woods of Urbana. And after this, we're all going to go find it. <laughs> Please welcome to the PKN stage, Jody Adams. I hit rock bottom about four years ago. It took a series of tragedies in my life, including the loss of my mother, to make me wake up and see I was living a life without purpose, without meaning. At the time, I didn't know that the greatest gifts often come in some very ugly packaging. The only thing that saved me besides my loving family and friends and a therapist was yoga. At first, I used my practice to punish my body. If I was sweating and pushing myself to the extreme, then I couldn't think of my loss, my grief, my pain. But the greatest part of hitting rock bottom is that you can start over. You have nowhere else to go but up. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. Fight Club. <laughs> I knew I had two choices to go through life bitter and broken and angry, or to keep my heart broken open. I wanted to be a better friend, sister, and daughter. I wanted to be a better human being. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Leonard Cohen. My ego was shadowed, shattered, my walls had crumbled, and I was at ground zero. It was time to let the light in. I invited this new energy into my life and into my practice. I no longer went to my yoga mat to punish my body. Instead, it became my sanctuary. And I knew that if yoga could save me, that I wanted to share this gift with others. Becoming a yoga teacher is one of the most rewarding endeavors I have undertaken in my life. I am honored to witness profound transformation in the lives of my students. And yoga is more than just a passing fad. It's not just about getting a great yoga butt or wearing the latest in yoga fashion. For 5,000 years, the science of yoga has been attempting to answer questions we all want answered. What is the purpose of this life? Why are we all here? And it all starts with intention. I read a quote once from a master yogi that without meaning, the practice of yoga is nothing more than gymnastics on a mat. The same can be said of our lives. Without living a life with intention, then we're all just going through the motions. Intention, or sankalpa, as it's called in Sanskrit, is a promise to the self. In yoga, it's used to guide one's practice. It's an energy or a thought that infuses every breath, every movement with a deeper meaning. The physical practice of yoga is more than just physical. And you don't need to know anything about yoga to find your intention, your purpose in life. Yoga is just one of the many vehicles we can use to arrive at the same destination. And that destination is a place of stillness, of quiet, of peace. It is from this place that we can come to know our true nature, our true selves. It is from this place our intentions are born. By honoring this truth, we can begin to live a more authentic life. Each day, I invite my students to form an intention for their practice. 
Over the years, I have begin, begun collecting those healing words in this little notebook. Let go. I am strong. Clarity and strength. Seek what my soul craves. Survive. Self-forgiveness. Compassion. Become the person I was meant to become. Be right here, right now. I was so moved by their words that I wanted to find a way to share them with the world. As a photographer, it was natural to visually express this shared human experience. And this project is a culmination of that desire. And now for my million dollar artist statement, you ready? <laughs> the art of intention offers an introspective glimpse of our own inner landscape of the soul in the context of nature and our inextricable connection with the land. Bam. <laughs> I started to photograph friends and yoga teachers in Illinois who were inspired to be a part of this project. And last fall on my way to Alaska, I reached out to yoga practitioners in Utah and Idaho to take advantage of that unique landscape. In six weeks, I'm traveling to Costa Rica to continue this project. And this is just the beginning. There are no limits to where this can lead because intention is universal. Geographic boundaries do not separate us from our core desires. And what I have learned is that we all desire the same things out of life. We all want to feel loved. We all want freedom from pain and suffering. We all want happiness and joy in our lives. At the time of death, people who have tried to live consciously ask only one or two questions about their life. Did I learn to live wisely? Did I love well? So tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? What is your intention? Thank you.